everybody, welcome to Ars Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, where I'm Mark, a former scuba diving instructor, do my very darndest to answer your scuba diving questions. So if you do have any scuba diving questions of your own, then pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. And if you use the Ars Mark hashtag in said comment, you get yourself and your question featured in an up and coming video, but I do type out an answer in the comment section in the meantime, so that you do get an answer. Uh, you don't have to wait for the video to come out. Um, today I'm answering a question from, oh, someone. Um, I'm not actually sure. I, I, there wasn't a name attached to this uh, and I don't think it was on a YouTube comment because I couldn't find it in the comment section anymore. Um, but anyway, uh, we're looking over a range of scuba diving equipment and kind of what's good. So somebody asks, uh, first, thanks for your work over the years and the reviews, you're welcome. Uh, it's been very helpful over the last 10 years or so of my diving career, you are welcome. Uh, my question slash situation, I'm looking at the Halcyon Adventurer Pro or S-Tech Pro Plate, the Mark 19 Evo D420, that's Scuba Pro Regulator, or the S700, I presume you mean the A700, the A and the S key are quite close. Uh, the Perdix 2, Shearwater Perdix computer, or the Sunto Eon Core with Scuba Pro Super Nova fins. My thoughts are that I can have a light plate as most of my diving is south and that swap a heavier plate when home. The regulators, I just don't want anything that breathes worse than the F8s that I dive and my atomic split fins are just massive and the better diver I have become, I tend to frog kick more. Computers, I'm open, I dive an original Zoop, Sunto Zoop, but I like the thought of grow with the gear. My only concerns is the rechargeable in ion. Do they not degrade over time? Why not just swap AAs? Any recommendations you may have would be much appreciated. Thank you for your time in advance, you're welcome. So. Four questions in there. Uh, we're looking at travel back plates, but also ones that we can dive at home, regulators, fins, and dive computers. I think those were all of the uh, the parts. So back plate, you're looking at the Halcyon Adventurer, which is a, um, a carbon fiber back plate, and the Scuba Pro S Tech, um, Scuba Pro Tech, I think they just call it, or S Tech. Uh, the Pro Pro relates more to the harness than the backplate itself. I think they just have a stainless steel and an aluminium backplate. Uh, I don't think they do um, carbon fiber. So with traveling, yeah, you want an aluminium or a, a carbon fiber. I've never used a carbon fiber uh, backplate or I've never invested in a carbon fiber backplate myself just because I've read some anecdotal information about how sometimes if it does twist and talk you can delaminate and when I was thinking about buying or sort of investing in so much I was just like do I really want to like risk it because uh, as much as I do look after my equipment if I if it does get twisted in a bag or something and it just delaminates yeah. whereas if it's aluminium it's, it's just a three mil plate of aluminium so with that I'd probably go for the, the safer just metal choice because I think I I worked it out like gram for gram. You're not saving a huge amount of weight when you go from aluminium to carbon fiber. I don't think there was a huge difference. It, it could have changed now. It's been a while since I was um, like crunching the numbers from my own. Um, so yeah, I mean, <clears throat> then it just comes down to like the harness basically. So the S-Tech Pro, the Pro version of the harness has some adjustability in it. It's got metal buckles that you can adjust on both sides, I believe. Uh, and then you get the S-Tech Pure, which is just a single piece harness. Uh, so no adjustment. You can adjust it to your size and figure and where you want things, but you can't adjust it every single dive. Um, I do like their new back plates, they're very snazzy, uh, but they are still quite a traditional design. One really nice thing that I do quite like is that it's got that grab handle at the top, so it gives you somewhere to really grab hold of instead of your tank valve or just your shoulder straps, you've got a proper grip handle and that the um, uh, the like the the screw grommet holes in the in the spine are recessed as well so if you've got wing nuts as well it really does sort of recess them away um so both of them top top brands um personally i'd probably go down the scuba route um 
but saying that there's nothing particularly wrong with uh, with halcyon uh, it's just i preferred i mean halcyon obviously make metal mat plates so that's definitely an option and then yeah double check that you can re-thread them uh, just as easy if you're looking to go from a lightweight travel plate then you're diving at home you're fitting a stainless steel plate double check it's um it's quite easy to uh, to re-thread it i imagine it is most back plate are quite easy to, to, to re-thread. When you're looking at regulators, you've got the Scuba Pro Mark 19, which is, I think, their newest first stage. Uh, I don't know if they snuck one under the radar that I haven't noticed. It's basically a diaphragm version of the Mark 25. Um, and with the D420, D420 breathes really nice. Uh, it looks kind of odd because the, uh, the diaphragm is just dropped down a little bit. It actually makes it a nicer breathe. That's why they brought it back. It, it's they hadn't like made a D uh, regulator for a, quite a while, and then just probably about three, maybe four, maybe even more now years. Uh, they they brought back the uh, the D four twenty, and uh, and yeah, nice nice regulator. Then we got the. I mean, you put down the S seven hundred. I don't know of the S700, I know the A700, which is their diamond regulator. Uh, they've got at least two versions of it now. You get it with either the chrome um, complete metal body or you get it with a carbon fiber front. Uh, lovely hand built second stage. Uh, so I choose that one uh, if it's in your, uh, in your price range. Looking at dive computers, the Perdix 2 or the Eon Core. Lots of different ways to um, uh, to separate these. Uh, <clears throat> myself, I dive the Perdix, um, although I dive the Perdix one because the two didn't exist back then. Uh, but yeah, that is one of the big things about all of these rechargeable batteries in torches and dive computers is that just like your mobile phone, eventually after a certain number of recharges, it the battery life starts to diminish. So. <sighs> That is always a, uh, a conscious thing. On the flip side of it, because it's factory sealed, you never have to worry about greasing O-rings and making sure they go in just right, and you can top it up on the go. So there are benefits to, there are pros and cons to both sides. Um, for me, I went for longevity in that, yeah, you can get AA batteries almost anywhere and, uh, and yeah, just slot that into your Perdix and, uh, and away you go. And then the Supernova fins, so they're the new fins from Scuba Pro. In you have a separate foot pockets to the blade, so you can separate them. They're pretty much a hinge design, much like their Nova fins. Um, but if you're looking to frog kick, I did see someone say, "Oh no, people mainly say that they're a bit light." I've not used them in the water myself yet. Um, they say they're quite light, so they're good for travel, but if you're diving in colder waters and you need a bit more trim weight down towards your feet because your, your ankles are a bit more buoyant, then they're quite floaty, so it can be a bit annoying in that aspect. But if you're only diving in warmer waters and you don't have a big dry suit or whatever, or that buoyancy down your legs, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Um, but a lot of people do say, yeah, they're good, tough fins. Uh, and yeah, they do have that uh, rather special party trick of being able to separate them um, so that they fit into a much smaller bag. Um, I think that was everything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're, you're looking at good equipment. Uh, I don't think there was anything on that list where I would have gone, nah, just, just leave that. It, it would all be like on my short list. I'd all be like, yeah, I'd be quite happy diving with that. So um, yeah, whichever way you do end up going, you're getting some good equipment. But I would go for, yeah, probably Scuba Pro, the, uh, the S-Tech back plate. Scuba Pro do make some nice um, tech dive equipment. Then you have to choose the wing that goes on the back, depending on whether you're diving singles or twins. Um, Regulators, uh, Mark 19. Mark 19's a uh, lovely first stage. Uh, I don't actually, I don't know if they make the A700 with the, uh, the Mark 19. Um, it kind of came out the same time, I think, as the, uh, the D420, so I think they were paired up. I'm not sure whether they did it with the, um, uh, with the A700 as well, uh, but Scuba Pro are quite good at. Um, uh, testing each of their combinations so it should be okay and if you can buy that combination yeah you should be perfectly fine uh, but choosing between d420 and the s700 
I'd probably go for the S700 just because it's kind of fancier. Um, Perdix or Eon Core, I just go for the Perdix. Um, I prefer sheer water dive computers. Um, Eon Core, wonderful, um, uh, wonderful dive computer. Uh, very solid, very well put together. But yeah, just replaceable batteries are, are just easier. It, Pros and cons, both sides, but I choose the Perdix, and I, I did choose the Perdix. And Supernova fins, yeah, they're fine. Um, but if you're frog kicking, uh, I'd probably choose more like a, a vented style fin, uh, more like sort of one of these, so either Apex like VX3, um, VX3, what am I talking about, the RK3, or the uh, the fourth element tech fins uh scuba pro will also make their tech fins as well uh shark fins there are a lot of like good solid um vented fins out there and they're not particularly heavy especially the um uh, the fourth element ones they're still quite light uh, and they're a lot shorter compared to your uh, your atomic split fins uh, so for travel that makes your life a little bit easier um but yeah those are my choices yeah, a good shopping list uh, on there. Lots of good equipment from uh, from good top brands out there. So it's all going to be decent stuff. But if you want me to um, uh, to like rate or like look over, compare and contrast any uh, like equipment in particular, uh, by all means, let me know down in the comments below. If you try and keep it to like two things, like I'm looking at this computer or that computer, I can spend a bit more time really going over the pros and cons of both of them when there's about four or five different things. Uh, it just, I feel like I, ha I have to rush. Um, but yeah, if you are torn between two things, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, any other questions or even those questions in particular uh, that you want me to answer, include that Ask Mark hashtag. It gets you and your question featured in the up and coming video. In the meantime, head over to our website, scubadivermag.com Com, uh, where we do all of our articles, news, and all the latest events and interesting stuff. It's worth keeping an eye over there. And of course, subscribe to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel if you haven't already. Make sure that that red subscribe button turns gray and it says subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.